Hey, I'm here with Annika and Michelle from Microsoft Consulting Services, which are here from Microsoft Ready. Um, and we're going to a little bit talk about their job and what they are doing. So, Michelle, can you tell me what are you doing and working in consulting services? Sure, thanks. Um, so basically, I am an architect in the Solution Architect Office. That's a group in the CTO office. It's a pretty long title, as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, and our job is to unblock delivery, which means we are driving readiness, capabilities, uh, own the de uh, delivery part in an offering, which okay. means uh, the instructions for project managers, architects, and consultants how to implement. But also when things get more complicated, um, so-called escalations yeah. uh, for strategic opportunities, then uh, we are on point to help the, the guys on the ground to make things work. Okay, so you basically help like these large enterprises getting the architecture right, their cloud setup right. Um, and if there are um, escalations, which I guess there are never escalations, um, so uh, then you help as well? Yeah, it's a kind of a um, three pillar split. Okay. Um, the main task will be to help our own folks and um, so to make them successful. So yep. uh, the team uh, I'm part of, so it's a worldwide team, about 15 people are. Uh, doing a similar job for uh, difficult, uh, not difficult, different technologies. Yeah. Um, they are difficult sometimes, but the idea is that we enable the others. So the secure infrastructure domain where we belong into has about 3,500 people. Right. So it's uh, all about scale. So if you define an offer, it should be um, applicable for many others and all the regions that they can use that and uh, make it specific for their customer scenario. Okay. So that is the idea. So that's why I call it unblock delivery, and that has different aspects. Of course, escalations is the most interesting part, uh, <clears throat> but also the most challenging. Yeah. Uh, but my main role is uh, these days is about the delivery IP and the readiness of the okay. consultants. So many for our audience right now would ask like, okay, you're dealing with all these Azure stuff, and Azure is huge. Is there any particular like ways of like technology you're like working with or services or basically covering almost everything? So what we are trying to address here, and that was also the reason why we came to, to Redmond these days, we had a boot camp to, to get a few more consultants and architects trained up uh, how we implement landing zones, enterprise control planes in Azure. And the idea here is to, I mean, they need to have the Azure knowledge already. So the, we have all the push to go through the certifications. So you had to do that as well, I assume. So everyone at Microsoft, uh, being technical or not technical, had to go through the certification pass. So our consultants and architects have already that level. Okay. But what is missing is uh, how to apply that to a certain offer. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, a huge challenge there is really to go into this uh, HR way of working. And that's also the reason why I have uh, Annika with me as an HR project manager. Okay, that sounds super interesting. Like HR project manager sounds for me like, okay, that's super interesting if you do that. So what is your part of that? Like, what are you doing? My part is actually, I mean, we are talking here about digital transformation projects, right? And it's not only about technology here, it's also that mindset shift in terms of how do we deliver, how do we provide value to our customers, not only as Microsoft, but also um, from our perspectives, do, how do we enable our customers to provide value to their customers? Okay. So that's like uh, the heart of the digital transformation we have here with our customers, so the technology side, but also on the other hand that uh, how can we enable the customer to continuously deliver or provide value? Okay. And here, Agile is is a new approach that uh, yeah that is ev uh, evolving. Yeah. Uh, we started with waterfall, like uh, sequential phases of different activities, but then in the end, you see okay, you design something which it will be then out of value. So with Agile, which also comes from software development, we have uh, the opportunity to uh, ourselves deliver projects with flexibility and also with the uh, with a focus on continuous delivery of value yeah but then also enable our customers who are not there yet though so uh, we're yeah. getting to agile but uh, it's it's a long process yeah I think that's very important I think when we when I did work as a consultant out there and we went from these classic IT projects where we have basically this is the concept this is like okay we're going to implement this the way it is. And that's it, and we had a fit, like a start and an end point. Yeah. And now with with having the cloud, where services change all the time, which concepts maybe need to like adjust. I guess it's very difficult for customers, but also for us to understand like, okay, how do we actually go forward? I think yeah. that's what you're addressing, right? Yeah, that's that's why also why my role is kind of twofold. So on the, on on uh, one hand, we need to enable our consultants, also our architects, to follow that agile approach. Yeah. Like how can we like adjust to change it, changing customer requirements to changing technology, but also on the other hand, how can we enable our customers 
to apply that particular mindset in order to then have them providing value to their customers. Yeah, yeah, makes total sense. So now we talked a little bit about what you're doing, and I think a lot of people are asking, okay, how does that look like in like real work? How does that do? So what were kind of like the real like engagements you had in the last couple of times, which you want to talk about, or you can share a little bit of information what what you were doing there? So. Well, I think that uh, um, yeah, we alluded in that. So we started to redefine how we implement the Azure landing zones, um, okay. especially because we need to be more on point. Services are changing, but also requirements do change. Uh, if a customer is starting with Azure, then they start to realize, well, we can do much more, or then maybe some priorities are shifting. So we, we call that also, we need to have iterative design processes. Mm -hmm. um, so you start with a, a minimal functional design or an MVP. Yeah. Uh, and then you need to have a vision where you want to land, but uh, you can't fix everything on day one. I mean, if we go back to our Hyper-V days, it was five years life cycle. You knew what yeah. can be done, what can't be done. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, that that mindset is still very much out, and that's yeah. what we need to break through. Yeah. But also, services role is, uh, is, I would say, a little bit different. We need to make the market. We need to lead with newest technology. We need to enable that with our customers and partners. So that's why we should not go the easiest path. It, it's really about leaving an impact, a big footprint, to make sure that the customer is able to use Azure in, in the way it was designed for. OK, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I When we speak to customers, it's not just about creating a virtual machine, and that's it, and then create thousands of virtual machines, and that's it, right? Um, really having that control over the environment, making sure everything is in the right place, and getting started in the right way, I think that's hugely important part. So what kind of like tools would you or or, or like what is the the thing you get started on like to like um, to basically get started when you talk to a customer in a technical way? Like obviously there's a lot of conversation mm -hmm. going on. Uh, but what would you like? What are the tools we would like use for this? So uh, I think one highlight we, we share here is that we don't use slides anymore. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we, the tool is Whiteboard, um, yep. and uh, as the office company, um, we love PowerPoint. Yep. And I think every consultant has thousands of decks. Uh, and the idea is not to make use of them anymore. So okay. really go in and say, well, okay, let's start on a blank sheet of paper and just do the requirement engineering. And uh, we should definitely make sure that. We harvest all the, the concerns or the, the requirements, and uh, especially when we talk about compliance and control, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, we need to understand what is the bigger picture. Yep. And uh, so that's why our process is really to harvest as much as possible, okay. to understand the customer, to learn from them, and then come up with our uh, opinion on what is our design proposal. Yep. And that will be then the, the fundamental to say, well, on that we're going to build. Yeah. It's, so whiteboard is the tool. Yeah, it's it's so funny when you mentioned the slide deck. I like I remember like in the early days where we had the slide decks, and then what happened was basically we always needed to update because they were outdated basically a day later when we created them, right? Because everything changed again, and so I really like that. There needs to be a clear approach from moving like shifting mindset a little bit. So there's a side note to it. Uh, on one hand, I think it's much cooler to to use the whiteboard, and then you can leave bigger impact and yeah. interact better with the customer. Yeah. On the other hand, I share that I'm responsible for delivery IP, which means that I'm certainly accountable or responsible to get the slide deck fixed and updated all the yep. time. So if I look at the workload, which would end up on my shoulders, I well, you know what? My part is much cooler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we get rid of really, I think, 800 to 1,000 slides, uh, okay. which were used in, uh, in older days. Oh, um, wow. That was a complete different approach. Yeah. And the first reaction from our delivery folks is, oh, wow, I need to learn something completely new. And no, it's 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 actually what we are doing as consultants any day. Yeah, yeah. yeah you just use a different tool, or you don't use a different tool, or use a different tool, and you like do the. Everyone used whiteboard already, but it was very easy to have these PowerPoint decks as a support. And yeah. when customers do not have the knowledge, then you 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 can go really yeah. deep. But on the other hand, also the readiness from our customer is really they matured a lot. So yeah. I think that uh, everyone had interactions with a cloud provider already these days. Um, there's a lot of um, um, compete, of course, mm. that people are stu uh, starting with other clouds, which is um, fairly yeah. okay. Um, not everyone everyone can be perfect. So then, basically, um, our yeah. cloud is then something where we need to identify okay, what is where do we fit in? Yeah. But yeah. we don't need to go in and say, well, that's a private cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud. These conversations are definitely not required. Okay. Anymore. Not by us in services. There are other teams taking care of. And okay. I think you guys do an amazing job to share all these technical. 
information which is required to get people ready. I hope we do. I hope we do. <laughs> <laughs> There's still also a long way to go. Um, so you shared a little bit what you're doing and how that looks like. Um, so how is it for you? How do you like engage with customers or your job? Actually, it's uh, it's easier just to say like, okay, we need to enable the customer to do agile. And when I'm talking about agile, because there's usually some confusion around the term, it's it's a methodology. Mm -hmm. We should then execute uh, through different frameworks such as Scrum or Kanban. So when I now switch to maybe Scrum, it, 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 the concept is the same. So it, it just enables uh, flexibility and also that focus on uh, continuous delivery of value. So how do I approach the customer? So on the on the one hand, we have our consultants enabling the customer to do like cool technology yeah. stuff. And here in that context, we are talking about digital transformation projects, cloud enablement projects. The focus is on automation. So we do a lot of uh, infrastructure as code. Yeah. So that's that's a consultant job. And I, I set the framework, let's so to say, to have the consultants uh, transfer knowledge to our customers. So we have like, uh, from my side, I organize a brown bag, brown bag sessions with the customer. We have a buddy program. Okay. So that's the technical focus. But on the other hand, it's actually uh, even more difficult because you, you encounter not only uh, the development teams of the customer, yeah. but basically the whole organization. Because yeah. again, that's a mindset, mindset shift going from waterfall to agile. And this doesn't happen overnight. And it's not only about just executing scrum ceremonies or so. Yeah. So it's really how, yeah, how do I engage the customer with it? Sometimes it's easy because the customer already wants to do agile. Okay. So they, they at least are motivated to change. But then you, you come back to that, uh, let's say, project delivery discussions. And you, it appears, okay, you want to do agile? But you also ask me for milestones and a project okay. plan, or yeah. also um, also uh, uh, tracking of deliverables. So what is needed here is really um, some change management. Mm -hmm. This cannot only be done by myself in my project management role, but I'm there to have a uh, discussion with the customer, uh, create awareness awareness throughout the whole customer organization, so that from C level to the development teams, everyone knows. Okay. We are changing, and it's it's for a reason, and it's good. And while it's actually easier to 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 do that with the development teams because they're keen uh, to apply that new way of working yeah. because they they are able to to do really cool stuff in a very short duration. Because with Agile, you you have a focus on on you deliver value, and by value I mean like product increments mm -hmm. within weeks. So in a Scrum concept, there would be two to four weeks, and then then you uh, have a potentially releasable product. So there, it's actually, it's not so difficult okay. because they think, oh, it's cool. And although at the beginning, usually everyone has is hesitant. You, and you fall do... probably back, right? It happens like, you look, okay, we'll start doing it. And at one point, you fall back in these old mythologies. Is that something you see as well? Or? Um, not necessary, again, with the development okay. teams, because, uh, I mean, they get also support from our consultants who already apply that new mindset, and they learn quickly. Okay. But again, uh, the, like the, the customer project management or the customer sponsors who are usually like driving the project or yeah. sponsoring the project, there there it's difficult okay. because they still want to know when you go into a steering committee, for example, yeah. these are guys who like provide the budget yeah. and they want to see results. Which is totally understandable. Which what they don't see is like okay, they are continuous results, but they just see a small picture out of it. So that's why they continue asking about uh, deliverables, what has been achieved, and yeah, it would be there needs to be some switch. So how do we tackle that? We usually start, especially with that uh, cloud transformation or foundational project. Okay. We start with uh, just doing waterfall. Yeah, and. While we are doing waterfall, we already do transfer, knowledge transfer sessions. Uh, also, sometimes if we have the budget, bring in uh, an agile coach. Okay. So we prepare the customer slowly for okay. that agile delivery. Okay, you're not and just then, coming in and yeah, like they won't work. all of it. I mean, although they're willing to do agile, they, they don't know what it is. They don't know what is required or like even if they think they are doing agile already, it's it's not what what they like really executing. So we, we take necessary time to prepare the customer and then transition smoothly. That's mm -hmm. like a hybrid approach. We call it water scrum fall. Okay. 
uh, yeah, quite funny. But, uh, <laughs> but it's also a journey, right? And yeah. then even though the customer has done already something in Azure, has gained experience, it's it's really how do we take them from the starting point when we understand, okay, what has to be done? We create a design. The idea is not to have a hundred pages design document anymore. It has to be reviewed and approved. So it's also here that the process to get that design documented, to drive decisions, to track decisions, should be more interactive, iterative, uh, agile, uh, yep. to make sure that we really have that flow and do not get stopped back. So the idea is uh, so that the way we structure our engagement, that we show value every two weeks in a sprint or okay. milestone, whatever you call it, but it's really to show back uh, results very yep. quickly and then to adjust when needed. But that's the landing zone concept when you uh, start to build your Azure infrastructure, the, the first um, shared infrastructure case or whatever. But later on, we, we, we transfer that into a competence center. So I think it's it's important that if you're there for six to eight weeks, uh, you don't leave that footprint. I yeah. mean, of course, you, you give all the modules uh, used to have the infrastructure as code setup done. So we are relying on Azure DevOps, for example, have the pipelines uh, as standardized modules to really set everything up. But the mindset that that needs yeah. time, and then also the, it's just the first MVP. So what is um, required in addition? Yeah. So what other initiatives are we supporting with the customer? And this cloud center of excellence is really a very strong um, initiative, which is I mean there are Gartner studies around it. I think everyone wants to do it. Uh, the yeah. way we are delivering is we we have this body system that you have uh, Microsoft people and people from the customer, and you uh, you have these different teams to really develop the products which are supporting the business. Okay. So it's not focused on IT. It's really okay. to enable the business to be successful, to drive uh, uh, everything into the cloud and to use the full potential of the cloud in a controlled way, secure with strong governance in a managed uh, environment. Yeah. No, I like that. I was like always when I was thinking about consulting services, I was always thinking, okay, now I have just some consultants showing me the technology part, right? And especially with now that all the cloud things happening, I see that there's much, much more going on which you need to do next to like just implementing technology, but also changing the mindset and the processes. And maybe even, I don't know, the organizational structure of, of companies, like how they're building their teams and stuff like that. I think that goes hand in hand with this competence center approach that okay. uh, you have these uh, COEs or however you name it, it's a function which needs to uh, work differently. So in the past, uh, standard IT and network team, storage team, uh, uh, hypervisor yep. teams, <laughs> without calling the names. Uh, um, but uh, that is different in the cloud. You yep. need different personas, um, you need different skills and different ways of interacting. And uh, I think that has to change. And this function or organizational change is really helping to, to build a new group of people. But the idea is also to reuse them. I mean, give them the time to change to, into a cloud model and to operate the cloud as it deserves it and not yep. to apply an on-premises concept to the to the new way of yeah. So I think that's something where we try to, to be um, very supportive that we have uh, over a period of multiple months, uh, six to 12, uh, to be okay. very effective. But then also to leave that footprint. Uh, the idea is that we can step out at some point. So it's not that we are an outsourcer, not at all. Enterprise services is here to, uh, I, I call it as an icebreaker, to help them to, to get them the path through. Or if you are into uh, movies like Fast and the Furious, when you need to kind of catch up with your competitor, yeah. you just inject some uh, <laughs> some additional gas and then you will get really a boost. And yeah. I think that mindset we have gained in, internally at Microsoft, that's what we want to share. Yeah. Go okay. back six, seven years, we had to change from a Windows license company to cloud consumption. Uh, and that was a huge transformation we went through. And that learning we share with our customers. Okay. Now, like, kind of like also like a coach, right? It's more like not just implementing stuff, it's really about coaching the customer to do the right thing and, and like work with the cloud. In so the right we are thing. actually back at uh, what, what's called consulting, right? We, yeah. we are working uh, as Microsoft Consulting Services. Years back, it was we came there, provided the technology, and left. Right now, it's that's why I'm talking about cloud enablement projects. We are there not only to provide the customer with necessary technology, but also to enable the customer to actually use that technology. And that's at the heart of that cloud, cloud center of excellence uh, projects. Okay. So this is all like super fun. And I think like a lot of companies should basically go that approach, especially because you can write so much value and knowledge um, during these projects. So how do customers engage or start an engagement with consulting services? And where would you point out, like, if someone wants to know more about our um, about these offerings and setups and processes and all that we have here, uh, if they want to know and learn more about it, where would you send them? 
So I think regular readiness uh, declared adoption framework is a very good starting point. We as services are contributing to engineering content, um, the um, customer success unit, so the other um, entities who are enabling customers to move to the cloud. So we are collaborating with our learning, share our IP, so that will be published in, in their sites. Um, we, we don't have our own space on docs, so we don't need that, so it should be one voice. What we are having is an enterprise services block where we share our stories as well and uh, the reference cases. So I think that's another good uh, entry point to know more about what we are able to do, how we can help. But then the local representatives in the subsidiaries, um, they're always here to help. If you have a, a time technology ac um, account manager, an account delivery executive, an account manager, we have so many roles. If you know someone say, well, I want to speak to services, I think they uh, they can help. And otherwise, um, they can reach out to you or me <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will redirect, uh, redirect it to the right place. Absolutely. OK, with that, I want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, I learned a lot about how you do and start with cloud projects, especially in large enterprises. Uh, for you, I put all the slide, all the links and everything in the description. So if you want to know more um, about how you engage with consulting services or about the cloud adoption framework, as well as your blogs and social media links into the description. And thank you very much. Thanks.